Welcome back everybody. Here I'm going to deal with how people are being seriously misled by a toxic mix of scientific truths reframed by false narratives. Increasing CO2 undeniably redirects more energy back to the Earth's surface, increasing the Earth's potential warming. However, as easily demonstrated in this video, increasing CO2 is not causing more droughts and wildfires. Physicists have reliably determined that CO2 is increasing the Earth's warming potential by about 2.5 watts per meter squared. That science is indeed settled. However, how it will affect Earth's climate is definitely not settled. Depending on the Earth's sensitivity and the different researchers' hypothesis, a doubling of CO2 concentration since the mid-1800s has the potential to raise global temperatures somewhere as between 1.5 to 4.5 Celsius. And so far, CO2 has only increased by about 40%. So to convince you that a one degree rise in, in 100 years is deadly and dangerous, politicians like Al Gore repeat claims by alarmists like climate scientist Jim Hansen that CO2 is adding the equivalent of 600,000 Hiroshima bombs each day. Now, to justify that ridiculous, scary narrative, they simply multiplied CO2's 2.5 watts per meter squared by the Earth's 500 trillion square meters of surface area and then multiplied that result by 86,000 seconds. Finally, they ignore how much energy quickly escapes back to space. At the 2023 World Economic Forum, a desperate Al Gore claimed, claimed those bombs were boiling our oceans. Now, he must believe the public is really stupid or too scared to think critically. The average temperature for the Earth's oceans is about 4 degrees centigrade, just 4% of the temperature needed to boil water. Even the warmest hot spots on the tropical ocean surfaces only reach 33% of the boiling point. So if your kids or friends have been terrified by such lies, I suggest doing a real scientific experiment in your own home. The average ranch house has a living room that is about 31 square meters large. A lamp with a 100 watt light bulb will provide about 3.2 watts per meter squared of energy to that room. A little more energy than currently being added by CO2. Then seal that living room off from the rest of your house and only use that light bulb to warm the room during the winter. It will become very clear very quickly that 2.5 watts is not providing dangerous heat nor preventing dangerous cold. Now clickbait media profits from cherry picking disasters, fear mongering and misinforming. For example, in November 2022, CNN announced California's climate crisis is intensifying and taking a heavy toll on the residents. Reading on, they reported the stark reality of climate change in California is clear. Record high temperatures, unrelenting drought, and unprecedented wildfires. Now, I've addressed the wildfire misinformation in earlier presentations. Just Google understanding wildfires and how we must adapt or seeing, setting Senator uh, Whitehouse straight on the climate and wildfires. But because climate alarmists can only claim that wildfires are getting worse because rising CO2 is raising vapor pressure deficits and drying out the land, this video focuses on the causes of drought and dryness. Now first, using the Palmer Drought Severity Index, an EPA time series for the U.S. contiguous 48 states, shows absolutely no trend in droughts for the last 125 years. The worst drought conditions happened in the 1930s. <clears throat> Looking at 100-year regional trends, there have been fewer droughts in the eastern half of the United States. The only region with a significant drying trend is California in the American Southwest, where drying due to La Nina-like conditions have the greatest impact. And that drying trend will greatly be reduced with one 
other year of data as California's 2022-2023 water year is experiencing record high rain and snowfall. Now using tree rings of the blue oak, a moisture sensitive tree growing in the Sierra Nevada foothills, rainfall variability can be extended back to the year 1300. And yet again, there is no long-term drying trend. The 21st century is not experiencing any unusual precipitation or also called meteorological drought. Similarly, NOAA modeled the Palmer Drought Severity Index back to the past 1,000 years. This metric evaluates agricultural drought and soil moisture. Nonetheless, they determined worse droughts happened when CO2 concentrations were much lower than today. NOAA's data on California's annual rainfall since 1900 also shows no trend. So there is absolutely no correlation at all with rising greenhouse gases. There are better correlations with the all-natural Pacific Decadal Oscillation, which refers to 20 to 30 year switches between El Nino-like and La Nina-like ocean conditions. Now, paradoxically, the narrative on how rising CO2 concentrations raise temperature depends partly on increasing moisture, not increasing drought. Here is the suggested mechanism. First, rising CO2 adds about 2.5 watts of energy, potentially raising air temperatures. The air holds more moisture as temperatures rise. Increasing water vapor is a greenhouse gas that amplifies that temperature increase by 1.7 times. Yet despite that small temperature change, some very impressionable people who never think critically become convinced that climate change is causing human extinction. Those impressionable pawns of climate alarm have been misled by many so-called experts, such as those at the National Science Foundation funded UCAR Center for Science Education. Their website writes that global warming is causing more evaporation, so there is more water in the air, so there will be more intense rainfall causing floods. But under the category that all things are possible if you just believe, their very next paragraph states the opposite dynamic, that more evaporation turning water into vapor causes drought. Thus we are inundated with a pseudo-religious scientific claim that with, sci with CO2 all things are possible. Our impressionable and vulnerable children then become depressed, falsely believing rising CO2 does everything bad, destroying their future with both floods and drought. In contrast, drier and warmer weather happens when greenhouse warming is most reduced. Scientific consensus shows drier land causes higher temperatures is measured in California's Death Valley or the deserts of the Sahara in the Middle East. Those deserts have been created by atmospheric circulation that brings dry weather. Wet weather has more clouds and water vapor. More clouds have a cooling effect by reducing solar heating. More water vapor promotes more evaporative cooling. But because water vapor is the most powerful greenhouse gas, absorbing three to four times more heat than CO2, water vapor increases greenhouse heating. Still, those combined dynamics show wet weather results in cooler temperatures. Now, dry weather, however, brings clear skies and reduced water vapor. That increases solar heating. Less moisture reduces evaporative cooling, further warming the surface. And reduced water vapor reduces greenhouse warming. Thus, dry weather increases temperatures when greenhouse warming is most reduced. First, to be clear, joules are simply a measure of energy and watts are a measure of how much energy is delivered each second. So to put joules into a perspective, it takes 4.18 joules to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. 
but a whopping 2,257 joules are required to convert a gram of liquid water to water vapor. And despite absorbing that much energy, there is no change in temperature, which is why evaporation causes latent or hidden heating. When there is no water to vaporize, all that energy will quickly raise air and soil temperatures instead. It only takes one joule to raise a gram of air by one degree Celsius. Because that energy input can be detected as rising temperature, it is called sensible heat. It is the shift from latent heat to sensible heat that accounts for the increasing soil and air temperatures as the soil dries. Soil temperatures can rise by 10 degrees Celsius as the soil goes from 30% moisture to zero moisture content. Air temperatures are primarily governed by contact with the ground. Air that contacts warm surfaces rises, allowing cooler air built above to sink and warm. This convection loop determines the air temperatures used in climate science. Accordingly, several scientific studies show the strong relationship between air and soil temperatures. Human groundwater extraction lowers the water table and can reduce soil moisture, hastening the arrival of the local wilting point while shifting temperature control to greater sensible heating. Stress from groundwater depletion further amplifies the Southwest's vulnerability to dryness and resulting warming. Urbanization further reduces soil moisture and removes cooling vegetation driving urban heat islands. Climate scientist Dr. Roy Spencer has presented evidence from his research showing that urban heat island effects are largely indistinguishable from any theoretical CO2 driven warming. Similarly, dog lovers concerned about dangerous surface heat that could burn their dog's paws present this warming, a warning. When air temperature is at 95 degrees Fahrenheit, dry black asphalt reaches 140 Fahrenheit, while lighter colored cement reflecting more sunlight only reaches 125 degrees Fahrenheit. As asphalt and cement increasingly cover urbanized areas, more surface temperatures are increased by 35 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit higher than surface with living grass. Weather stations in the Global Historical Climate Network are becoming increasingly urbanized and skewing global temperatures. Only 13.2% of all GHCN weather stations can be called truly rural, where natural warming is best measured. In addition, airport weather stations with their asphalt and cement runways and parking lots are increasingly becoming the backbone of weather stations in the climate network. So how often are alarmist scientists and clickbait media incorrectly attributing warmer temperatures and natural droughts to rising CO2? Democracy depends on a better informed public, a public succumbing to fear mongering and false narratives only opens the door to government tyranny. Thank you.